Good evening, everyone. Are you hearing me? Shall we start? Yep. Yep. In previous class, uh, we are seeing uh, creating data set, right? Creating data set from data frame. So we cannot create data set directly. So first we create a data frame. From data frame, we create what? Data set. So data sets are uh, advanced features of uh, data frame. Data set can have data RDD features and data frame features. So if a file has only one column, we can convert that column into corresponding data set by using data frame dot as and type if data set has multiple types yep we cannot create data set directly in uh, one uh, before two point x versions so that's why we have to create first data frame from data frame we create what data set okay so we discussed this first part and today we are going to discuss second part of data set. I have file two dot CSV. I want to load this CSV into data frame. From data frame, I want to convert into data set. Let's start our IntelJ IDE. So I'm using import uh, all these imports. We return imports in uh, one file, right? What is that file name? SQL import. So this is our SQL import. SQL import, then val hc equal to new hive context and i'm passing and i'm passing <coughs> sorry uh, sc so this is my imports file instead of writing every time just i'm using this import file let me uh, start sbt Scala SBT cell. So it started Scala SBT cell, then load uh, SQL import, SQL import dot txt file. So it is importing and creating Spark context, creating SQL context, creating Hive context. Then finally, it will return references. <laughs> we need to import Hive package. So this one is required. The SQL dot hive dot package. Okay, this package is required. Let's start SBT console. Then load SQL import dot txt file that is importing and creating Spark context, creating SQL context, creating 
uh, five context. So it is created successfully, right? Then next one load uh, create data frame create data frame by loading file one dot csv create data frame by loading file one dot csv let's see what is file one in workspace in park as well i have file one dot csv let's open file one dot csv file one dot csv contain header and columns header and columns file one dot csv contain header and columns so here what i'm doing file one dot csv what i'm saying header is true in for schema then it will create data frame then df1 dot show so we have id1 id2 id3 and data right yes or no then df1 dot df1 dot print schema print schema we got column names with data types yes or no then create a case class create case class abc create a case class abc then uh, convert data set val ds1 equal to df1 dot as of abc df1 dot as of abc then it will convert data frame to data set data frame to data set once we have a data set we can apply rdd operations or we can apply we can apply what data frame operations so this is rdd operation then we can apply data frame operations okay both we can apply by using data set so this is the advantage of data set so if it is a json file json file what we are doing uh, we are reading json format and we are storing into data frame So this is data frame. Then create equivalent case class object, case class object, and convert into so data frame contain. Let's open file two dot json, file two dot json. If you observe this json, we have key value key value and key array so this is array so we know how to map this key value so we can create j sorry case class object with these properties right id name and what about this array how can we create uh, array object in case class observe in case class we are creating id log marks of array name so we have array array type we can define array type then it will accept all the array values array values okay so let's practically see that one so first what i am doing i am creating data frame i am creating data frame by loading file2.json so 
హైవ్ కాంటాక్ట్స్ డాట్ రీడ్ డాట్ ఫార్మాట్ జేసన్ డాట్ లోడ్ ఫైల్ టు డాట్ జేసన్ ఇట్ విల్ రీడ్ జేసన్ ఫైల్ జేసన్ ఫైల్ దెన్ డేటా ఫ్రేమ్ వన్ డాట్ షో వీ హ్యావ్ ఐడి నేమ్ అండ్ మార్క్స్ ఆర్ ఏ రైట్ మార్క్స్ ఆర్ ఏ ఎస్ సార్ నో దెన్ కన్వర్ట్ దిస్ వన్ ఇన్ టు కన్వర్ట్ దిస్ వన్ ఇన్ టు డేటా సెట్ సో వీ యూస్ కేస్ క్లాస్ వీ క్రియేట్ కేస్ క్లాస్ we create case class case class student id marks colon array type name string then val ds1 ds1 equal to df1 dot as of student that's it next ds1 dot show ds1 dot take of 2 dot for each of print ln sorry not ds ds1 so we got to student objects right yes or no then one more example file 3 dot json let's open file 3 dot json a json contain id name marks array address with inner json address with inner json so inner json is another uh, object then how can con- how can we convert this json object into data set so we can load this data into data frame first load this one into data frame so what i am doing uh, here file3.json so it is created df1.show so we got address is in address id marks name then i want to convert this one into data frame so how do we convert how do we convert this one into data frame sorry data set so we create case class we create case class first we create address case, address case class and we create one variable address of type another case class in student class we create a variable address type is another case class in this way we can create case classes in this way we can create case classes okay then i am creating child class student class in that class we are passing variable name address and type is address that's it to map inner json we are using this approach to map inner json we are using this approach then finally val ds ds1 equal to df1 dot as of student ds1 dot show so we got it right so in this way we map data frame to data set data frame to data set very important point in uh, data set encoders are created for the type of data create internally encoders are created for the uh, type of data we create the encoders are available for primitive data types are primitive and multiple data types multiple data types using case classes implicit package must be import implicit package must be imported to use 
this as so we have encoder classes we have data types but data types we have encoder classes so these encoder classes automatically convert your data data frame data into data set but for our uh, classes see uh, if you want to convert different kind of data into data set then we write our case class case class case class so these are internally uses to map our data frame data into data set okay very very important uh, in any java sorry any spark interview they will ask what is serialization what is serialization in spark you will get this question in most of the interviews serialization means converting uh, object to form to other form other form to object to form so we are converting for example we want to convert our data in object form to database format or we want to map our object form to hive data format internally it uses java serialization technique cairo serialization techniques encoder serialization techniques the default one is java serialization technique the java serialization technique to change serialization type to change serialization type at the time of spark configuration creation at the time of spark configuration creation time we can set conf dot set spark dot serializer org dot apache dot serializer dot creo serialization creo serialization we can change serialization type what is the difference between java serialization creo serialization encoder serialization encoder serialization so for data sets for data sets encoder serialization is used for data sets encoder serialization is used it is better performance than creo serialization creo serialization while converting data set object to rdbms objects or hive objects conversion while well, conversion it is very faster algorithm internally it convert the data set objects to corresponding form very faster very faster so data sets uses encoder serialization technique by default data sets uses encoder serialization technique by default data frame uses by default is java serialization if you want to change serialization type to java serialization to creo serialization we use configuration settings okay and next important topic in spark sql is spark session spark session so this spark session was introduced in spark 2 spark session was introduced in spark 2 what is the advantage of this spark session see if you open this sql imports file uh, we are creating spark context object right we are creating sql context object we are creating hive context object yes or no we are creating spark context object we are creating sql context object we are creating hive context objects separately if i have a requirement of rdd i have to create a spark context yes or no if you want to implement rdd we have to use spark context operation then i want to deal with rdbms then i go for sql context or i want to implement data frame operations then i go for sql context 
but i want to interact with hive data i want to interact with the hive data then we go for hive context so based on our requirement we are going for corresponding context objects right but whether it may be uh, sql context it may be hive context we need or we require spark context we require spark context right So whether it may be SQL context, it may be Hive context, we require Spark context. Without the Spark context, we cannot create SQL context and Hive context, right, Professor? SQL context is mandatory, right? Yes. Okay. But what is the advantage of this Spark session? What is the advantage of a Spark session? let's write one uh, one sample use case here we have a spark session this is uh, inbuilt inbuilt class just i'm writing syntax of uh, spark session i'm writing spark session uh, sample code in this what we have val val park context park context equal to new spark context park context same as val sql context equal to SQL context well hive context hive context equal to hive context so this implementation already provided in spark session so spark session class has all the contexts all the contexts and built it all the context checks all the context par context sql context hive context is inbuilt available in park session no need to create no need to create par context no need to create sql context no need to create hive context all these contexts are by default available in park session park session okay then just to create the spark session object just to create a spark session object a spark session object contain all three objects in built then we can call corresponding yep you are correct ravi it is costly operation but but internally whenever we call spark session dot spark context then only so for any application spark context is mandatory right ravi okay then uh, if you want to deal with rdbms we require either sql context or hive context right yes or no we require sql context or hive context so if you want sql context or hive context we call one method whenever we call that method in that case it will create hive context or sql context otherwise it will not create by default it will not internally create those contexts it has a reference whenever we call uh, corresponding method it will return that object okay yep so how do we create a spark session so to create a spark session first we need to import org.apache.spark.sql we already imported then val ss equal to spark session dot builder dot master and we provide master name dot app name we provide application name dot get or create so it will create the spark session 
there is another way of creating spark session spark session dot builder dot config and old approach master local config spark dot app dot name application name get or create you can use either approach so for, i'm using first approach to create spark session first approach to create a spark session you can use either approach so it will create a spark session object once we have a spark session object once we have a spark session object then then i want to set log level so spark session dot spark context dot log level so we created val sc uh, ss equal to new spark session new spark session with some properties so you want to access this one how do we access ss dot spark context dot set log level okay you understand right how we are accessing this object this reference is ss dot this reference dot set log level so spark context is created next one create rdd then how do we create ss dot spark context dot make rdd only one thing instead of sc context sc dot make rdd we are using ss dot spark context dot make rdd rd1 dot rd1 dot count it returning five values rdd contain five values so it will returning five values how to create data frame how to create data frame to create data frame we require either uh, sql context or hive context right how can we access sql context or hive context ss dot sql context then we get sql context from text file creating data frame so ss dot sql context dot create a data frame create data frame so df dot show sorry df1 dot show df1 dot print schema so column names and values next one how to create a data set Yep. See, I'm creating data set. I'm creating data set directly from local data. So here, uh, let's see. So for data sets, it require internal implicit. Let's use direct statement. Then ds1 dot show ds1 dot print schema ds1 dot ds1 dot take of two right we got it right so we can create directly we can create directly data set then remaining is same writing table writing temporary table so once we have data frame or data set then we can create temporary tables so once we create a temporary tables once we create temporary table or 
then we can apply sql operations how do we apply sql operations means here park session has sql function park session has sql function park session dot sql show tables it is showing temp tab one then park session dot sql select temp tab one select star from select star from temp tab one we got data okay so once we create a temporary table or permanent table we can apply sql queries by using spark session dot sql function earlier we used sql context dot sql context dot sql iu context dot sql right so spark session is the spark session is extension of hive context and hive context and sql context so it has par context features hive context features i didn't get uh, ravi extension means it has both the features internally it contain uh, all these three features uh, ravi no need to create th uh, that object all three objects are available in built it i shown in this right example so in this way it contain all these three context objects very important one to enable hive context in spark uh, spark session directly hive context is not available hive context object is not available then we have to enable hive context using spark session dot builder dot master master name app dot sql app enable hive support enable hive support by default uh, hive context is not available hive context is available but not enabled not enabled so if you want to use hive context in our spark session we have to enable hive support we have to enable hive support okay so sql context has both data frame data set temporary table features and permanent table features there is no meta store for sql context there is no meta store for sql context spark context is required hive context data frames data set are available we can create temporary tables we can create permanent table but hive context meta store is creates okay spark context also required spark session without hive support data frame data sets are available temporary tables are available permanent tables are available but no metadata spark context is not required because internally it has spark context spark session with hive support data frames are available data sets are available we can create temporary tables permanent tables meta store is available par context is not required so this is these are the different different features compared to spark context sql context and hive context do you have any queries up to now in today's class do you have any query no right 